So, hello again, YouTube and folks at the internet. I uh, had a little mishap with the mill a couple of days ago. Uh, first I thought it was, it was encoder related and that the encoder broke, but nope. The mill drove itself to a hard stop so hard that the servo coupling broke. I took the encoder off the servo, measured it, signals are fine, measured and wire signals are fine, but every time I power up the servo drive and move the servo it lets loose and just goes to that direction I wanted with full speed. So yeah. But anyways, that's another matter entirely. But now that the servo is down and the spindle needs some attention, and the tool clamp clamping has something worn because it doesn't want to release the tool properly. So People been waiting to see how this was built, want to see the construction, well, I'm going to take it apart, first I'm going to take it off the machine, and then I'm going to disassemble it from the motor, and after that, we'll see what's inside, and, uh, well, if you like to see more of that, you need to become a patron because I'm going to make a video about this spindle in patron and see what, what, what materials were used, what bearings, fasteners, everything, but that'll be on Patreon, at least, at least for the starters. And if there's interest in this spindle more interest then we're going to have to see if i make a make a higher tier price for it and release all the cad files related to this so everybody who wants to can build their own the reason why i'm not giving this away just for free is because I have released some stuff, Ergon related, and after a while I see those solutions I've made been copied into Chinese Ergons. And, well, yeah, it doesn't feel so nice when your job is kind of stolen. So, yeah. So, all I want a little, little respect and small compensation for the thing, things I've done. It's not going to be much, but still. Well, it shows that if you really want it, you're, you're ready to chip in a little sum for the information that I've information and blood sweat and tears i've put into the design so but anyways yeah here's the spindle in the housing and i'll take it apart disconnected from the machine and we'll continue this video on the table so here's the spindle on the table and the problem is this, when I pull the lever, the sorry about the camera, the tool doesn't, it doesn't release properly. I bet there's something, something has worn, either it's the ball retainer that clamps on this because 
these look okay or it's the it's the sleeve that pushes the pole retainer that's worn don't know yet but anyways need to take it apart and see what's what uh, the the motor is motor is there ET48L2 it's a standard motor this is for a circular saw this motor type it's not too expensive and it's readily available pretty much anywhere I've seen this motor motor on many many circular saws the big ones that you cut cut firewood with there was a blade clamp in here but I made some modifications to this end I'm going to show the modifications you need to make and yeah all the dimensions and so forth are going going into the patron page so if you're really interested in make interested in making one I'm going to disclose this cross everything in there watch what what's used and why this has served me for many years hadn't had too many issues with it only issue is that damn it's heavy the spindle taper is not it's not hardened but eh, there shouldn't be too much trouble in it I've had to ground it once because I had a tool mishap and it it rammed into the workpiece and one of the tool holders got stuck in the workpiece and it rotated in the spindle because there are no there are no positive locks should use some kind of locking system for the spindle now it's only on friction for the taper but it works okay you can you can run 12 millimeter uh, aluminium carbide bit into a well into a solid block of aluminium just as fast as the machine can go and it will cut but big big tools and steel you need to be a little bit careful because there's only 700 newton newtons of force holding the tool in the spindle so 70 kilograms pushing the tool into the spindle it's plenty on the machine side that this is and taking consideration the limit limitations of the machine it's it's fine you could go with a bigger spring pressure in there easily three times five times but then you can't use this type of lever because you cannot detach the tool from there you you, you need to use a drawbar through the motor motor spindle axle and the way this is set up now it's virtually impossible so well not impossible but you need to make uh, make the motor coupling to the spindle a little different but yeah that's one possibility how to detach and attach the tool and then you could use a pneumatic ram which was which was the reason i made this spindle i wanted to make make atc tool changes but then i got then i got the bought the emco and that little machine just it's usually standing still and it's re reserved for special occasions because the 
spindle can be tilted but yeah anyways I'll put the camera away detach the motor from the spindle and we'll continue there the way this is constructed is kind of backwards you need to disassemble the electronic electric motor from it and that you take take off from behind you need to take the cooling fan off i loosened that cooling fan then there's seal and then prying it from the front and you take off the entire Yeah, stator assembly with the windings and you're just left with the rotor then you need to remember to put that, that back on bearings feel good that feels good and then you get to the interesting part there are four Allen, Allen head bolts in here and you take those off, then you can get the motor plate off. I'll take those off and then we continue. So taking the bolts off and that, the flange off because there's a slight interference fit in it. And the reason is quite simple. There's a plastic ring in here retaining the bearing because there is this lip is smaller than the outside diameter of the bearing and here is the here's the drive pin for this oh there's some rust in here no it's grease but yeah this is the modifications I made to the shaft I shortened it and there was a keyway in here and there was a flange that holds the circular saw blade in place and that's the key keyway for that i just drilled drilled and put the dowel pin in there it's a press fit loosely no it's a press fit can't remember it's been it's been a couple of years when I last had the support. But yeah, here's the insides. There you can see, see the pusher that pushes the tool. No, I can't push it by hand, but I can. Move it with the lever that pushes the tool out it looks like it has rotated slightly inwards maybe might have have forgotten to put loctite in there maybe can't remember it's been <laughs> it's been so many years but yeah, the motor is held by four M4 bolts. These ones. All they need to handle is the torque from the motor. And that's all. There's no... There's no other forces on that. Just need to be held there. All the cutting forces are on the spindle frame. But yeah. I'll set the camera down and take the bearing out and you can see what's under the bearing I hope it gets I can get it out nicely this used to be well maybe it has swollen up but yeah I'll take some tools take it out take the bearing out and you can see the mechanism that operates the ball creeper and after that it's 
disassembly and rest of the rest of the parts on, of this rebuild will be will be on Patreon at least for now we'll see how it goes <laughs>